You are listening to WRMU 91.1, the radio voice of my union. Stark actors on the airwaves. Yeah. Okay. Um, today we have a full house, and we were also very fashionably late. We apologize for that. Because, um, finals week, everybody. Yes. <laughs> finals week sucks. It really does. We had to finish the script, like, literally before we walked here. Jor- <laughs> Jor- them Jor- prepared. No, it's finals week. It is finals week. So <laughs> not the Georgia has finals. We have <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, six, seven, seven uh, yes. uh, a listener <laughs> and a non actor, but six people acting today. Yeah, and me, your host Christina Zordich, and co-host Georgia McCartney, and loving narrator Jamie Lawbacher. And and our our acting crew, our yes. our Rosanna. <laughs> oh, that's me. That's Elizabeth Wheeler. <laughs> yes. And our Abigail. You have now been redeemed as Abigail. Yes. Well, hello. My name's Clarice. <laughs> and we have a new guest tonight, David. David Clunk speaking. And we've got a wow. That <laughs> that that you have this a sweet voice on there. And and we have Kayla as an audience member. Yeah, um, pretty sweet. John at home, if you're listening to this, text me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> shout out. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is the only script for tonight. Yeah, we've only got one script tonight, but I feel it's good because it really wraps up everything. And then yeah. I feel after the script, we'll talk about Stuff. what we enjoyed about, um, you know, the, doing the show this this year, and then what we're gonna do next year, what's in store, things like that. And you know, yeah. of course, thoughts about the scripts. That's always nice to chat. Yeah, sounds good. Yep. Right. So, is there any way I can do um, this without it looking? being weird. No, it's okay. No. 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 Am I needing am I needing to get in there? Is that why it's Yeah, kinda. It's okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll just get, we'll just get friendly. Projecting your Project. Voice. Project. Yeah. Project. 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 Okay. Okay. Who's so. gonna read this epic du- beginning? I think who did you deem anybody to do that yet? No. Elizabeth. Anyone who wants to. Okay. You wanna read the <laughs> I can yeah. do she because, sounds thrilled. I got this. What we've got here is the ending to like a story we've been continuing for who knows how long. It's been at least That's before almost, I almost all semester. Before I started doing this with you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. So, so I have to crunch this into like it a half It was all page. semester pretty much. Yeah. Did yeah. we start this over Christmas break? I think we did. Oh wow bro. Yeah. yeah. High five. Yeah. Elizabeth take it away. Okay. Read our life's work. <laughs> I will. Thank you. It pretty much is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not even lying. <laughs> Silence to the back. Okay. (laughs) Russell Romero is a journalist who uses his powers of time travel to prevent disasters. Quinn is a con man who has been stealing for longer than he can remember. However, the two of these men became unlikely friends when they met at a bar one night. Once the two became close, Russell told Quinn he was a time traveler. Quinn took the news well, but then Quinn told Russell he was a con man. At first, Russell wasn't happy to hear the news. But he empathized with Quinn and tried to put him t- to help him turn over a new leaf. It went well for about three months, but then Quinn cracked and stole a painting. Russell went back in time to stop him. Quinn didn't steal the painting, but he fled the scene, and Russell was suspected as a thief instead. The police later found Russell innocent, but after the whole incident, Russell and Quinn didn't hear from each other for a while. Time passed, and Quinn was about to leave town because he didn't think Russell would want to speak to him again after the parting incident. But he was stopped by a strange sight. Russell's ghost. Russell was unable to remember what happened to him, so even though Quinn was shocked, he agreed to help him get to the bottom of the situation. The two were successful in finding out what happened to Russell. They found out that Russell saved a young boy named Cornelius by pushing him out of the way of a falling tree. Quinn and Russell ran into the boy's mother, Mrs. Cooper, at a nearby coffee shop. Once Quinn explained to her that he was Russell's friend, Mrs. Cooper kindly led Quinn to the hospital where Russell's body was being treated. The two of them attempted to reunite the two halves of Russell, but none of their plans worked. Finally, Quinn and Russell decided to take a break and go outside to talk things out. When they did, however, a strange thing started happening. Russell's ghost began to disappear. The two friends shared a tearful goodbye before Russell faded away before Quinn's very eyes. Bum, bum, bum! (laughs) So, okay, (laughs) since David is our newcomer and Kalen hasn't heard much of this stuff, did you catch all that? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay, I'm Quinn. She's Russell. Yes. Okay. Any uh, questions before? Any we questions? Dive in? Yes. Because uh, this is literally like the last door. Well. No. Uh, trucker accent acceptable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trucker. Mm-hmm. Trucker, trucker boy. Oh, oh sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's my moving buddy. Yeah. That reminds me of Toy Story. 
like you gotta have oh, a moving buddy. Moving no. <laughs> buddy. Yes. Okay, All so right. we're good. No questions about this seriously no convoluted story. Oh no, yeah, really. I it's think so we're good. Okay. Oh, there's a bit. No, I'm just kidding. Shall we start? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm doing it too. Okay. Yes. I think we should yes. start. Yes. Lovely. I love it. Narrator okay. Jamie. All right. This oh, is. Oh, plug the plug the stuff. Oh, you're not wearing your shirt. Plug the. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, I don't have my Star oh. Actors you could, shirt. You could check us out on Star Actors on the Airwaves Facebook. We also have Twitter, YouTube. Yeah. Just pretty much type in. Type. I can't English. Type, type in, in Star Actors on the Airwave on Google and. Find us on Facebook. Find us on Twitter? pretty much every form of social media. YouTube. Yeah. Jamie, thank you. Yes. For saving me. I was going to say it in a much more eloquent way and it didn't happen. It's okay. Just Google us, you'll find us. We're, We're on the what internet. What about writing with us, guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. If you're interested in writing with us or writing for us, please contact us on the Facebook page. Just shoot us a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. It is a lot of fun. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, our Facebook is... You guys' voices for that is so much better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We need to just record a, a commercial you really know. with Jamie and Clarice. Oh, there you are. <laughs> the, the Facebook page is... Dark Actors on the Airwaves, WRMU. Yeah. Yeah, just put that at the end of the Facebook, and you yep. should, it should pop okay, up. Okay, John. Okay. <laughs> so, um, right. yeah, I think that covers right. everything, because we, uh, for the people that don't know, we're a creative group here that write scripts, do creative things, like poetry, songs, stories. If you want to make anything creative with us, just tell us on Facebook. We'll be happy or to work with you. It. As or long as it's it. not visual, but if it's visual, I guess we could put and it And if it's a song, yeah. or if you change the lyrics exactly. to a song, make sure you tell us the yeah. original artist. Yeah, if it's visual stuff, I mean, we can put pictures up on them, because I'll illustrate yeah, characters from these stories. Yeah. So. I was going to say, you can always describe the pictures. Yeah. You just yeah. can't see them on, on the I'm radio. looking at a lovely painting. It appears to be of a I'm landscape. I'm looking at lovely <laughs> Jamie, who's wearing a gray Dress. dress. What is, is it? I dress? really like your dress. It's a dress with, the, with yeah. the, the, the 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 copper thingies. It, yeah, it reminds me of Elizabeth, excellent. where you had to wear. It. You're like, oh, it's the first day of spring, so I have to wear a sundress. Oh yeah, that was. And funny. it was snowing. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay, Ohio. that's Elizabeth. She <laughs> yes. went through ice to get pictures for Cooper. I know. Okay, so yeah, okay, if you want to be if you want to be creative with us, hit us up on Facebook and sit back and relax the story. Hope you like it. All right, guys. Here Take we go. it away, <clears throat> Jamie. It's. It's Good to See You Smiling Again by Georgia McCartney and Christina Zorich. It was the morning after Quinn saw the last of Russell. The man was in his apartment, packing up the last box. So this was it. There was no way he was going to stay in town now. He walked straight home after Russell had disappeared, not wanting to look back. He would leave this place, get a new career, meet someone, just as he promised. It would be difficult, but he'd try at least. He walked down the stairs and out the door, handing the box over to the man who was driving the moving van. That's it. Really? It isn't that much? Even living in here in an apartment? I like living to the minimal needs. That and all of his valuable stuff was already packed in the trunk of his car. But Russell's locket was still in his pocket. Meanwhile, Russell was in a haze of darkness. He couldn't exactly determine where he was or what was going on, but he felt grounded. He felt weight again. Then he began feeling something else. It was steady and calm. Was that a heartbeat? Was it his? Did this mean he could breathe again, too? Russell promptly opened his mouth and took in a large breath of air. His lungs stung as he breathed in, but he kept on doing it. He could breathe again. It hurt, but it was an amazing feeling. Russell twitched his fingers. He felt something soft, like a bedsheet. His senses were returning, too. He was alive again. Well, he was always alive, wasn't he? But these feelings... Russell thrust open his eyes and looked around. The room was white. Too white. Wait. He was back in his hospital room. He put a hand to his chest and then to his face. He was back in his body. It was incredible. He had to tell Quinn. Wait. Russell hesitated. What was he doing? Was he about to tell Quinn that he wasn't a ghost? Really? A ghost? That sounded so far-fetched. Something like that was a dream, wasn't it? Russell gently rubbed his temples. He didn't want it to be a dream. But he didn't know what was real and what wasn't anymore. 
That dream had felt too real to be a dream. Wait a minute. Russell glanced over. There sat the flowers Quinn had brought in. That was it. It wasn't a dream. Russell thrust out his hand. He moaned in pain, but it would be okay. He had to call Quinn. If what he thought was true, Quinn might be leaving town very soon. Russell rubbed his eyes so he could see the numbers on the phone clearly. With a shaking hand, he dialed Quinn's. Man, he was sure glad he took the time to memorize his number, because his cell phone wasn't going to do him any good now. It was probably crushed under the tree like he was. Are we heading out to your new place then? Yeah, just g give me a few moments. Quinn wanted to say goodbye to the apartment since it was one of the last places he had been with Russell. The pancakes, the sunrise, everything. He turned and felt his phone vibrate in his pocket. He took it out and looked at the number. It wasn't one of his contacts and it wasn't recognizable. He turned off the buzzer and let the call go. If it were really important, the person would leave a voicemail. Russell could feel his heart sink as his call went to voicemail. He sighed. Maybe Quinn had already left. He better not have got a new number, too, but then again, Russell wouldn't blame him if he had. Quinn had mentioned wanting to start a clean slate, didn't he? But how long was Russell out for this time? It couldn't have been too long. Had it been? Had it been a day, a week? Russell's thoughts then were interrupted by the bing of the voicemail. Well, here went nothing. Hopefully, this message reached Quinn. Uh, uh, hi, Quinn. It, it's Russell. Uh, sorry, are you in the middle of something? W were you packing? I just wanted to say I, I guess we don't have to wait as long as we thought we'd have to in order to see each other again. <laughs> Um, anyway, I I'm using a hospital's phone. Uh, give me a call back when you get this, okay? I'll, I'll wait for you. Quinn walked up the stairs to the last floor. He opened the door to his apartment and stood in the middle of it. He sighed deeply as he looked around one last time. Here, he was going to let Russell go. Right here, right now. His reverie was interrupted by his cell phone vibrating in his pocket, making a little ding noise, indicating he had a voicemail. He pulled out his cell phone, placed it to his ear, listening to the message. His eyes widened. What? Russell was alive? No. He, he died. He disappeared right in front of him. Getting back to his body didn't work when they tried. How was it possible? He fumbled to dial the number back, almost dropping the phone. His heart raced, and he breathed heavily. Come on, Russ, pick up, pick up. Russell jumped as he heard the hospital's phone ring. He looked over. Without even thinking, he picked it up. It was a stranger he could hang up, but he was pretty sure it was Quinn. At least, he hoped it was. Uh, hello? Quinn immediately became enraged and filled with joy at the same time. What is this, Russell? Can you talk through telephone lines now? Is this some kind of joke? I saw you disappear. I still have the locket with the dent from it when you when it fell from your hands. What what what's going on? Are are you seriously alive and okay? Um, yes. This isn't a wait a minute. Oh man, I dented that locket. Oh, sorry, but no, this isn't a joke. This isn't a joke. I'm I'm alive, Quinn. I am alive and okay. I'm not a I'm not a ghost anymore. I I just woke up and I was back in my body. Here. Here, listen to me breathing and everything. <coughs> you hear that? Coughing too. Do you do you believe me now? Quinn's anger immediately faded, and he sighed in relief. <sighs> Who cares about the locket? You're breathing from your own lungs again. How does it feel? Oh, pretty great, actually. It feels good to be back. Well, I mean, there's some pain, but it's going to be okay. And I think something happened to my lungs. The one feels a bit weird, but, but hey, they're back, and I'm back, and they're mine. <laughs> oh, man, it, it, it's good to hear back to your old self. Hey, hey are, are you accepting visitors right now? I can head over. I, um, wasn't doing anything. Yeah, it is good to be back. Russell replied as he itched a scratch on his chest. Wait a minute, that wasn't a scratch. Were those stitches? Wait, what the heck? Did, did they cut me open? He looked around. Th they changed my clothes, too! Hey, where's my fedora? 
Russell flailed a bit before replying to Quinn. Oh, d sorry. He, I, I think I'm accepting visitors. I mean, head on over. Oh my goodness! He's awake! A nearby nurse had noticed Russell and began walking towards him. Aw, oh, snap, Quinn. Who are you calling? Do you remember your name? Do you know where you are? Whoa, lady. Cool your jets. I I'm Russell Ramiro, and I'm talking to a good buddy of mine named Quinn. And, of course, I'm in Mainsville Hospital in room 215. The nurse just stood there for a few moments in shock. Patients that just woke up from comas weren't supposed to be this aware. How did this man even know what hospital he was in? He was in a coma when they brought him in. I... I, I can't believe this. Oh, uh, stay right there. I'll, I'll go get the doctor. We have to run some tests. I'm not going anywhere, lady. Hey, hey, wait. How long are these tests going to take? Can can I have a visitor? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, how about a, a few hours? Russell turned his head back to Quinn. Uh, come see me in a few hours, buddy? Quinn furrowed his brow, hearing a woman speak in the background. Oh, goodness. So no one knew he was awake? He was the first person he called? Wow. That was probably the kindest thing anyone had ever done for him. Well, except Russell going back in time and saving his life. Quinn smiled as he spoke. Yeah, uh, I'll bring you something special. I'll see you in a few. <clears throat> All right, sounds good. See you then, buddy. Russell then hung up the phone as he watched the nurse rush out of the room. He looked around the room to see if he could find a mirror. He then quickly realized he did, in fact, know what his body looked like. Well, with the ghost thing and all. But he was pretty, pretty busy freaking out to get a good look at the current state of his body. He shrugged and leaned over to smell the flowers Mrs. Cooper and Quinn brought. They smelled lovely, especially the pink ones. Oh, crap, Rosanna! He'd have to clue her in, too! Russell reached for the phone, but before he could call Rosanna, the nurse returned along with the doctor. Hello, Mr. Romero. How are you feeling? Uh, all right. Kinda in pain. On a scale from one to ten. 8.5? Can I use decimals? Sure, and we'll get you some painkillers, but first we have to run a few tests. All right, have at me. Russell said with a grin. Quinn ran downstairs to the moving van, the back of it closing up. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Did I say we could leave yet? He asked, looking through the van window. The moving man shrugged. Hey, you told me to give you a few minutes. few minutes is over. Plans, plans changed. Unpack everything. What? Did your girlfriend call you and you're back together, so now you're staying? Quinn shrugged. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Meanwhile, Russell's tests went well. Russell's vitals were all in check, and the doctor said he would be able to make a full recovery. Well, with bed rest, that was. There were a few things that weren't going to heal, like the scars on his back or the metal plates they used to fix his broken ribs. But Russell told himself it would be all right. Those things wouldn't affect his ability to maintain a long and happy life. He smiled when the doctors finally left him alone. Sure, he was appreciative of their work, but he preferred not to be poked and prodded at by strangers. Once they were gone, Russell settled down for a nap. He was feeling exhausted, and after all, he wanted to be rested for Quinn's visit later. Quinn stood in the elevator, holding a box at his side. It still smelled fresh, and it was still warm. It might be too much for Russell to eat right now, but it was the thought that counted, wasn't it? The silver doors opened and Quinn stepped out, looking down, apologizing to anyone he might have bumped into. He had never let anyone else try, to, try his homemade recipe. It wasn't that he didn't want anyone to try it, there just wasn't anyone he could cook for. He stepped into room 215, seeing Russell asleep. Poor guy must still be exhausted. Well... He wasn't going to leave and come back tomorrow. He was staying. Quinn sat the box on the floor and pulled up a chair, waiting patiently for Russell to wake up. Russell was fast asleep on the bed on his front with his arms folded under his face. He was very relaxed. He was sleeping well. Maybe even a little too well. He was drooling on his pillow. Just then, his leg twitched and knocked the covers off. Quinn sat up in his seat, a smile on his face when he saw Russell move. He was waking up. He would be so happy to wake up to a hot meal. Cooking for him was one of his promises, after all. He frowned when Russell went back to being still. The only thing he could see was his steady breathing. It was nice. Watching him sleep was almost enough to put him to sleep as well. His body looked so small, so frail. But Quinn knew it was the complete opposite. 
Russell was a strong-hearted, strong-willed, everything. He stood up inside, lifting up the blanket and gently covering Russell back up. He patted the man's shoulder softly, bit his lip and let his hand lay there a moment, feeling Russell's breath moving his torso up and down. He smiled and sat down again. It was good to know that Russell was back in his physical body again. As Russell slept, he felt a warm, familiar touch on his neck. The memory of when he touched Quinn's hand before his disappearance flashed back to him. It felt just like Quinn. Was Quinn here? Russell woke up and slowly opened his eyes. He saw Quinn sitting in front of him, smiling. And without another word or thought, Russell lurched forward to embrace the man. Quinn's eyes widened, and he grunted when he felt the man's arms around him. He smiled and tried to hold Russell the best he could. Glad to see you, too. <laughs> you shouldn't be moving so fast like that. Don't want you to get dizzy or anything. It's, it's good to see you again, Quinn. It's good to see you smiling again. Russell heard what Quinn said, but he held on for a few moments longer. It felt so nice to actually be able to hug Quinn. He'd wanted to hug him so many times earlier, but couldn't. Now he finally could. He knew it was probably a bit awkward, but just for this moment, he didn't care. He was too happy. Quinn held Russell a little longer, a little closer, feeling his eyes water up at the man's words. Was Russell always this small? Or was it because he wasn't getting much nutrients in the coma? He almost couldn't recall how Russell felt. And it's good to see you, well, moving again. <laughs> oh, um, I brought something for you. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Quinn. I, I know what you mean. Russell then pulled away slowly as he released his grip on Quinn. He grabbed onto the railing of the bed to steady himself as he sank back into his hospital bed. Quinn made sure that Russell didn't fall when he moved back to the bed. Luckily, he didn't. You did? You brought me something? Th thank you. W what is it? What'd you bring me? Oh, I, I, um... Quinn turned and picked up the box that was on the floor next to his chair. I made you something. It's lasagna. I wasn't sure if you could eat it right now, but but I could always make more, and I brought you a piece of that cake, too, in case you wanted something lighter or for dessert. You made me lasagna? Russell thought back. Quinn did say he would make him something if he could eat. Now the day had come where he could eat again. Russell smiled wide. Thank you, Quinn. You're so considerate, and you make me feel really appreciated. Russell's stomach then growled loud, loudly, just thinking about eating. Uh, I can totally eat, eat right now. The doctors gave me some stuff like a nutrient shake and some toast, but that was before my nap. Russell shrugged and smiled. And it looks like I'm hungry again. <laughs> Quinn smiled and opened the box, carefully taking out the glass casserole dish. Uh, thanks. I figured we could eat together. You have no idea how hard it was to not eat any of this before you woke up. Or when I cooked it. <laughs> I'm with you, Quinn. I have no idea how you did it. It's, it smells amazing. I would have totally eaten some before if I had made it. He stood and rested the dish on the table, then took out paper plates he'd brought and plastic forks. Forks. He held the knife in his hand and looked at Russell. How big of a piece do you want? Russell thought to himself. He truly was lucky to wake up to the scent of a home-cooked meal his best friend brought for him. Russell looked over. Um, how about a medium piece? I, I'd totally say large, but I want to eat some of that cake you mentioned too earlier. Is is it the cake? Yep, it's the cake. A little one just for you. I didn't need one this time. Um, here, take a bite before I start on mine. I want you to know what you think. Uh, okay, wow, Quinn, you're so generous. Thanks. Russell reached out for the plate and took a fork full of lasagna. His mouth watered as he bit down. It was absolutely delicious. Mm, buddy, this is amazing. The spices taste wonderful, and the noodles are cooked to perfection. I, I never even tasted sauce this awesome before. Quinn smiled widely as Russell complimented his cooking. It was a good feeling to be good at something other than stealing. Russell took another taste, biting down hard again. Then there was the sound of a small snap. Russell pulled the fork out of his mouth along with a broken off tong. Oops. <laughs> hey, could I get another one of these? Yeah, probably. Luckily, I brought 
I just brought the box that I bought them in. Or one of us would be out of luck. <laughs> but don't be so rough this time. Take it easy. <laughs> Easier said than done, buddy. This lasagna is so great, I, I, I can't help myself. Russell began eating more. He smiled at Quinn as he did so. As he wiped his mouth with the back of his hand, he spoke up again. Mm, gosh, now I'm starting to question if I woke up at all and I didn't just go straight to heaven or something. Just then, Russell realized he probably shouldn't joke about something like that. Quinn looked down at the floor and felt himself blush. Ow. Was it really that good? Was Russell really that calm about the situation? He didn't know whether to be worried or happy about him returning to his old self so quickly. Mm, um, sorry. Hey, how long was I out for? Like, did I disappear today or a few days ago? The doctor said they brought me in <coughs> five days ago. Yeah, I didn't hear about it till after the first day. Uh, I knew that next morning. I, I saw you when I was about to get on that bus. Um, do you... Do you... You remember that far back? When we bumped into each other? Do you remember everything, or just pieces? Mm, yeah, I I remember everything, for once. <laughs> I remember the accident, and all the all the ghost stuff, too. And you remember, too, don't you? I, thanks for all your help, Quinn. I, I know I'm probably acting a little too happy right now, but I'm honestly just overjoyed that I get to hang around longer, you know? Quinn nodded, putting his piece of the lasagna on his plate and sitting back down next to Russell's bed. It's all right. I would be happy to be alive, too. Quinn furrowed his brow and took out his cell phone. Why don't you call Rosanna while you're in this good of a mood? I'm sure she'd love to hear from you. Oh my gosh, Rosanna. Oh, my baby! No, 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 no. Oh, she's probably worried sick about me. Oh, man. She's probably so in the dark. Oh, dang. Oh, I didn't mean for this to happen. We just found out everything today, and I really... I really didn't want to tell her that I was a ghost. Should I have told her I was a ghost, Quinn? Russell set his lasagna down and flopped onto the bed, feeling a bit lightheaded. Mm, how am I going to explain this one when even the truth sounds so far-fetched? <clears throat> Quinn flinched when Russell jolted up quickly. He held his free hand in the air, motioning Russell to calm down. The other hand held the plate of his lasagna. He swallowed, some of the lasagna still in his mouth. Shh, buddy, it'll be okay. Just... Just tell her you're all right, and we can explain the ghost thing in person, okay? Russell ran a hand through his long bangs and looked up at Quinn. Uh, okay. That sounds like the best route. Man, you've always got the good ideas. Russell reached over to the hospital's phone. Wait, should I call her with this phone or with your cell? <laughs> I've been known around my area of, of business as Mr. Man with the Plan, so doesn't surprise me. He took out his cell phone from his blazer pocket and handed it over to Russell. Russell took the phone from Quinn and smiled softly. Here, call her on this. She might not pick up since it's an unknown number. <laughs> like I did. <laughs> You're right. Man, I need a new phone. I guess the old one wasn't as durable as me. Russell then leaned back and began dialing Rosanna's number. After a few rings, she picked up Hello, Quinn? Um, no. Russell, actually. Russell, baby! Oh my goodness! Sorry for the freakout, but I haven't heard from you in an abnormally long time. Did you lose your phone or your charger? Ah, oh, Rose, I'm sorry, but there was an accident. With what? Or who? Is everything all right? It was... with me, actually. Sorry. Russell? No. Russell, are you okay? Are you hurt? Russell then began relaying everything to Rosanna. How he went back in time to save Mrs. Cooper and wound up getting hurt while saving Cornelius. There were a few sobs on both ends, but the two of them kept level heads. Quinn sat idly and ate some more of his lasagna as Russell spoke. He didn't look at Russell as the man explained the scenario. He could hear him cry and knew to let him have as much privacy as possible. Oh, babe, that must have been so, so hard for you. But why didn't you tell me sooner? Well, I would have, but I mean, there's this funny thing about comas. You can't really call people while you're in a coma. Well, Russell technically could and did call Rosanna while he was in his coma, but that was for another day. Rosanna blushed. Oh, right. I'm sorry. 
But thank you for telling me now. You're welcome. I'm glad to be awake again and hearing your lovely voice. <laughs> you charmer. Take it easy, okay? I'll book a flight back so I can see you again soon. Russell was about to tell Rosanna that she didn't have to do that, but screw it. He'd been through so much, he wanted to see her too. All right, sounds good, babe. Uh, oh, by the way, is Quinn there? You are using a cell phone, after all. Oh, uh, yeah, he is. He came to see me in the hospital. May I speak to him for a moment? Sure. Here you go. Russell held out the phone for Quinn. Ring, ring. It's for you. Quinn looked up when Russell handed him the phone in his happy, oddly adorable tone. Quinn chuckled, glad to see Russell <laughs> in such a good mood, and took the phone. Hello, Rosanna. Sorry for such a startle. Uh, it's okay. I'm just relieved to know what happened and that it all turned out all right. So, Quinn, did you call off or delay your move just to help Russell out and see him in the hospital? You said you were going to leave town the last time we talked, and now I'm talking to you and you're by Russell's side. Yeah, I, uh, I called it off. Figured I'd stay since Russell's all right. I made no promise to, um, to stop doing what I do and start over. I guess you can say this is me starting over. Rosanna smiled as a small tear formed in her eye. Russell was right about you, Quinn. You really are a great guy. Thank you for all that you've done for Russell. No, for us. You won in a million, Quinn. That was it. That was all Quinn had to hear to make him make his final decision. He was going to keep his promise that he would quit his addiction, cold turkey. There were no ifs, ands, or buts. He had doubts in his mind, serious doubts, that he would be able to keep such a promise, no matter how hard he wanted to. But those words were just the thing that he needed to hear. Uh, I appreciate it, Rose. Quinn said, looking down at the floor. Your boy's pretty gr great, too. I can't thank him enough for what he did for me. Uh, take care, Rosanna, okay? I'll give you a big old Quinn hug when I see you. You're always welcome, Quinn. You're part of our family now. And thank you, I will. I'll tell you to take care of yourself and Russell, too, but I know you've already got that covered. But at any rate, I'll be looking forward to that hug. It'll be wonderful to hug the two of you again. So, until then, goodbye, you guys. Goodbye, Rosanna. Quinn smiled again and hung up the phone, resting it in his blazer pocket once more. He looked up at Russell with a goofy smile. Well, I take it she took it pretty well from what I heard. She's a good gal. She is a good gal, and I'm one lucky sap. <laughs> um... Do you get that you still never got that ring for yet, her yet, huh? No, I would say you can't buy rings while you're in a coma, but I honestly had time before then to get one, but I didn't because they're so gosh darn expensive. Russell looked over at Quinn. He could tell what the look in his eye was saying. Okay, look, Quinn, I know what you're going to say. You're probably going to offer to help me out again with funds, okay? But... I'll be honest with you. I don't want to use the money you gained from your previous job or money that you need to go off with until you find another job. Russell rubbed his chin and then pointed. So, how about this? If you'd like to still help me out, I'll accept money from you when you get your feet on the ground and get a new job. I know this means we'll have to wait a little while, but some things are worth waiting for. Russell finished with a half smile. Quinn immediately responded, almost pleading. Aw, oh, come on, buddy. I'm not doing anything with that money, really. And who knows how long it'll take before I get a real job. I dropped out of high school. I'm worth pretty much nothing. I... I... I don't want to hold up the, the wedding. W worth nothing? <laughs> Jeez, Quinn. Russell put a hand to his face and started laughing. <laughs> Did you learn nothing from, like, what, a few hours ago? Don't... Don't make me do something that dramatic again just to get the message across to you that you have value, buddy. Russell shook his head a bit. Here, here, how about this? I, I already got some money saved up, so I'm like 70%, 75% of the way there? We can work together to rent, earn the rest. Let's, let's do odd jobs together, whatever it takes, but we'll do it as a team. Quinn nodded and slowly smiled. All right, as long as I get to help you out in some way. <laughs> He held his plate in his lap and nodded to Russell's food. You good? Or are you going to eat more of that, of that before you get the cake? 
Oh, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Um... There was one small bite of lasagna left on Russell's plate. He picked it up and finished it off. Mm, now I'm good. Let me out that cake, Quinn. Quinn chuckled and stood up, <laughs> taking the cake from the box. It was small, round, and had a plastic lid. He handed it over to Russell and sat back down. Here you go. Oh, for you, buddy. Eat it slowly, though, okay? Not too fast. Okay, Mom. I'll eat it slowly and chew my food. <laughs> um, so, if you don't mind me asking, yesterday, when you disappeared, did you mean you weren't afraid of dying? Because that's pretty brave. And also just your luck. I mean, come on. <laughs> the moment you aren't afraid of something and you allow it to happen, the exact opposite happens. Russell was about to bite down on a piece of the cake. He set his fork down and answered Quinn. Um, I don't think it was like that, honestly. I didn't feel like I was dying when I was disappearing. I felt, I felt like I was dying when that flippin' tree crushed me, but during the disappearance, I felt like, like I didn't have to hide anymore. I felt like you had seen the worst and best of me, and you you still wanted me to hang around. And now I, I feel like I don't have to apologize for being a screw-up or blame myself for things I can't control. In that moment, I felt like I had a wonderful best friend and girlfriend that would stick with me and back me up no matter what. And because of that feeling, something in me triggered, and I, it told me it was time to start a new chapter. One where I didn't have to put on a mask. Quinn felt his heart sink as Russell spoke. But it was a good kind of sink. Were those possible? He wasn't sure. Quinn adjusted his posture, carefully setting the plate of lasagna on the ground beside him. Quinn leaned down and wrapped his arms around Russell, his left hand gently running through the man's hair. He pressed his heart to Russell's ear, still holding him close, but very gently. Can you hear my heart? You helped his heart keep beating. You were the one who went back and fixed it. I... I want to thank you for giving me a fresh start, too. I, I know you were the one who was... Well, kind of dead, but... I feel like you brought me back to reality, too. Quinn was shaking now, trying to find more words to say, but couldn't. Russell just sat there for a moment, taking everything in. He listened to Quinn's heartbeat. It was steady and deep. Pausing, Russell thought back to when he was a ghost, when there was only one heartbeat. Now there was two. Russell sighed in happiness. Even though it was the simplest thing, Russell was grateful. Just to be alive, breathing and beating. But it was more than that. It was symbolic. Both men were now open with one another. Russell raised his hand and placed it on Quinn's. It didn't phase through this time. He felt it trembling a bit. Quinn, Quinn, buddy, it's okay. I mean, it's kind of not, but it is. We've got each other. We can trust each other, and things aren't so scary now, now that I have a best friend. Quinn nodded, his face buried in Russell's hair. Please don't ever leave me again. I know you never did, and I was the one to run away from you after the painting thing, and I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry, Russ. I, I feel like this never would have happened if I've just stuck around. Tell me this isn't my fault, Russ. T t tell me it's not my fault. Uh, Quinn, don't don't start this. Don't start with this blame game. You you told me not to blame myself, and now this means that I'm going to tell you not to blame yourself. Quinn, what what happened? Happened, unfortunately. It, it sucked, but now it's over. I'm gonna recover. I, I want to have an actual party with you, not not a not this pity party. <laughs> oh wow. You sure have a good memory for not having a brain in your head when I told you that. Like literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that's a new one. Quinn pulled away from Russell and cleared his throat, a bit embarrassed of how quickly he was how quick he was to hug the man. Uh I uh I can't remember the last person I actually hugged, aside from you and the group hug with Rosanna, but uh, yeah, probably my mother, and I barely remember her. 
Quinn trailed off, not wanting to get into the subject. He wiped his eyes with the palm of his hand and smiled. Russell looked at Quinn and smiled. Russell didn't hug that much either. It was pretty much just him and Rosanna. Now there was Quinn, too. This whole ordeal helped Russell realize that he wasn't as alone as he thought he was. There were other people feeling alone, too, like Quinn. Now, neither of them had to feel that anymore. Um, do you want me to get you something nice from the vending machine down the hall, or to drink with that cake, or are you all right with this hospital water? Russell took a bite of, of cake and nodded. Mmm, yeah, yeah, I'd like that. Please do. This, this cake is kind of more sweet than I remember it being. So, it'd be great to have a drink to go with it. Whatever you bring me would be fine. Oh, thanks in advance, buddy. Quinn nodded and smiled, still sniffing as he looked both ways out the doorway of Russell's room. He turned down the hall that led to the waiting room where the vending machine stood. In his youth, he felt like the innocent chapter of his life ended when he was forced to work and do cruel jobs just to get a fresh meal. And now that he was an adult, it felt like that second chapter of his life never really ended. It was such a long, drawn-out chapter, too. Good thing a character like Russell came by. Now it was time to close that chapter, or possibly even that book, and start a part two. Coins jingled in his pocket as he reached for some quarters, feeling Russell's locket instead. He looked up at his reflection in the vending machine and smiled. Russell truly was a character. The end. <laughs> the end. Oh, oh, good job, everybody. Very nice. smiled. I saw her when we got to the last page. She goes, I got my happy ending. Yes, Aww. I did. Yeah, at the end of last week. Clarice was like, what's going to happen? I'm like, what do you think's going to happen? She's like, I want a happy ending. I'm like, you wish. And I'm like, it's going to be happy. <laughs> On the I inside. Know. But of course you don't tell don't me do that. that. You guys had no idea how hard this was for us to write. We're I like, know, sure. it's happy. Yeah. No, what yeah. are you yeah. doing? How do you even write that anymore? I know. Like, <laughs> How do you write happy stuff? How do you stuff? write something that doesn't, like, crush someone's soul? I don't understand. Yeah, it's, it's like you break all the life. feels it's out and everything. <laughs> yeah, no, no. And, like, it is possible is... to have happy feels, guys, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, this is me. I'm used to this depressing feels. Well, no, okay. with me, I'm always writing happy stuff, guys. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, but, yeah, we want, I'd like some input now. What'd you guys think? Yeah. I, I kind of, I don't mean to go first, but it's I kind of like the yeah. ring part. I kept on thinking, why doesn't he get her, her like, a, a ring popper or something? You're like, they're in love uh, enough. Come I on. totally would, though. It's Russell. It's, it's kind of Russell, and he kind of actually might. I, I mean, like, he would I'm be so love- mad. He'd be like, dude. Give her some class. Yeah. <laughs> He'd get, like, down on one knee and, like, hand her a note, I owe you one ring. But it's like, hey, babe, we're still engaged, right? I was going to say, if right? you love someone enough, babe. <laughs> go for it. I would. No, I'd remember one time it. we were, like, yeah. we were just, like, talking, and I was just like, you're not going to propose to her with, like, a string on her finger, are you? And you're like, maybe. Can no. you do that? It's a promise string. It's a promise string. It's a good one, Clarice. That's a good one. David, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, Well, coming in when the story's pretty much wrapping up, I don't know. Uh, I like the story. Yeah. Uh, I was a little confused sometimes, especially in the beginning. Oh, yeah, because you're going to get it's that. It's really confusing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's some specific references back to other things. Yeah, a lot of references. Lots of references. Oh, uh, yeah. Lots. But that, that's to tie everything together. And he's yeah. I have a whole list in my phone. That's oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Thank you. Oh, do, you do you have a commentary from the person listening in? Oh, she, she does have some commentary. I'll do that first. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Tell us this live commentary. I'm really sorry if, well, the, to, the commentary is listening. Are, we, like, are we allowed to? Oh, yeah. This, yeah. Oh, okay. Is she okay? She can, she can deal. She, she can, can deal. deal. Is she, <laughs> is she okay? You can keep it anonymous. <laughs> yes. Okay, keep it anonymous. Yeah. Elizabeth, so anonymous. You guys don't friend. even know keep who it is, do you? No, I do not. I do not. We just Tell know us. we have a live commentary. From Elizabeth's commentary. friend. Yes. Wink, wink. By the way, thank you. Wink, wink. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, the first comment was that she's really hungry for her mom's lasagna. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, me too. Yeah, you, no. you made me hungry for dude, cake because I don't dad, want lasagna but the cake. Dad, yeah. if, it, dad, lasagna if you're listening to this, so right now. I was like, Quinn makes the best lasagna like daddy does. Aww. Well, shout out to her mom. She claims her mom makes the best lasagna. Oh, so you have have lasagna. Georgia has tasted it. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, just think of... So is Kaylin. Yeah, you're like, just think of that sauce. And that like, sauce. And then I just said, well, the sauce was I don't awesome, like lasagna, so. so I can't help you here. 
So I just oh, said awesome okay. sauce. Actually, that's what it was. The, the only other commentary from tonight was the how do you write something that doesn't crush someone's soul made her laugh. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, good. She could probably relate. Yes. <laughs> okay. I want. Um, I have my, my oh, own commentary yeah. too. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Talk more. I just yeah. I had a thought. I need to pin it in my head. Yeah, pin it. Write pin it. Down. Pin it. <laughs> okay. okay. Go you got it. You yeah. good. Yeah. Um, the line about breathing and then coughing made me laugh. That was yeah. Funny. Yeah, that was oh, thank the, you. The, that first bite of lasagna was awfully parallel to your certain other bite. What? <laughs> um, what? Oh, wait. It was awfully parallel to your first bite of cake in your other, in your other story. Oh, when he was really awkward in Queen's oh, body. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was actually, it was really interesting starting off, starting off tonight, I was going... You know, it's, re- it's really nice to hear Russell's voice again. I realize it's George's voice, but it's really nice to hear Russell's voice. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> wow, thanks. I feel honored. And you make a great doctor. You do. <laughs> doctor. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, Therese he's... is just great at everything. You <laughs> have a good personality switch there. You're like, I'm a hick and I'm a driver, and now you're like, I'm an intelligent doctor who speaks in monotone. Well, <laughs> I messed up the first time being real low, so I had to speak No, it was up. perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was no, good. It was good. And then the lines for the doctor were perfect, too. That's exactly what they're talking I love when he's like, oh, 8.5. Can you use decimals? I do that too. When yeah. they ask you on a scale of Me too, ten. actually. Yeah. That was good. Because yeah. you don't want good. somebody to be like, uh, like worse off in pain than you that actually said ten, ten and it's like, oh, yeah. you say ten, and they burst in. It's like, that is my own, is this my own personal scale. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only other one, I like, I like Define the... Define your 8.5. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's exactly it's like eight, do, though. but not. <laughs> I, I liked the... Russell's phone isn't as durable as he is. Oh, oh, I knew you did. I saw your face. And my oh, entire thanks. part where I was in there, I liked all of that too. <laughs> You're like, I liked my part. <laughs> yeah, I just love Rosanna. you being Rosanna on yeah, I enjoyed being. Yeah. That was it. That was the last thing. I enjoyed being Rosanna and saying to Quinn what all of us have been wanting to say to Quinn. Oh. <laughs> I don't remember what that was. was You're one in a million, Quinn. Thanks for all that. Ah, I'm done. That was us fan speaking to Quinn. You kind yes. of had like a, a, an Aww. English proper accent kind of going with it, and I, I, and I yeah. quite enjoyed that, though. Yeah, I felt good writing that line because I'm like, yeah. you know what? I Quinn's died not my inside. character. It, yeah, it feels good for, you know, Quinn to get something good mm-hmm. for once. So it's like, this man has been through a lot. Yeah, he's helped his this guy. Sucks. His, he's like, he's helped this guy through all these things, and it's like, it's good to hear like a thank you. Oh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> really, really yeah. Okay, going, off, going yeah. off the Rosanna talking to Quinn thing. <laughs> okay, hear your beautiful so voice. I'm sitting here going, if I was Rosanna, I'd actually be really ticked off at Quinn for not like calling me earlier and going, hey, guess what? Your boyfriend's in a coma. <laughs> no, I, I, I was selfish like, the like same that. Yeah, I was yeah, like, like, feels me. She knows. Yeah. Like, you, you that, like their, I like that. their dialogue. It was really sweet and everything. But I'm like, I would be like. Why didn't you call me? How long has this been going on? Oh, How long did you yeah. talk to the first? She'll, she'll chew them out later for not doing it. No, yeah. she, she needs to. We could have that. Let's what? Try. I, I think uh, that's yeah. just me that didn't think of that. No, 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 no. no. Quinn, Quinn probably could have. You got a little hair. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Quinn probably could have, but remember when he was all like, he kind of wants to be the only person who could see and hear us all the way because then... Then once he becomes a human oh, yeah. again, he's, but I mean, I'm he's selfish. I'm surprised yeah. Rosanna didn't like call him out on it. Oh. I mean, I don't know if she's if she well, was, that was like, aware of They're how both... much he was aware. Of. Like she might have thought he was on the same page. as Well, her. if you remember back to yeah, they were both on the same page when they first when they first both see Russell and they're like, "What's going on?" When they mm-hmm. both see Russell's ghost and Russell has you know amnesia, he's like, "I don't yeah. know what's going on. I'm a ghost. What the crap?" Yeah, <laughs> and uh, he's like. Should we call Rosanna see if she knows anything? Rosanna didn't know anything. Yeah. And then um, she's like, keep me posted. And he's like, I, I will. And oh, and he so didn't. He didn't. <laughs> well, how are you tell well, someone So, like, that. as far as it's she knew, nothing new happened. Yeah. 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 Like telekinesis or something. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how it ties together. She gets there. Did you want to speak up, David? <laughs> Did you I, have I, something to say? I to said, what is he going to do? Use telekinesis or something to communicate? Come on. On that note. <laughs> on that note. He's a time yes, traveler. Charles. Is it really that I'm hard to... <laughs> I'm sorry, Christian. Uh, he's a time traveler. Is it really that hard to explain, hey, I was a ghost? If you've already explained to your girlfriend that you're a time traveler? Yeah. 
She's going to accept anything at this yes, point. Yes, it is. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's in my head that... Guys, don't question it. It happened. <laughs> don't question it. <laughs> well, it's in my head that once um, Russell told Rosanna, like, he's like, hey, hey, I'm a time traveler. She's like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... I didn't believe it for like a week. Yeah, that's what she said, actually, in the uh, original script, but... Mm. I feel like Quinn is the most easygoing with I know, all this weird stuff. I know, because really he's like, cool, and you're like a superhero? <laughs> yeah, and Russell's Can like, Can you steal no, stuff no. with me? <laughs> that was his oh, immediate thought. thought. That, that, that yeah. was his immediate That's thought. That's the typical guy, guy, though. Everyone would love <laughs> oh, if good. you get time travel. Come on, now. <laughs> like, we yeah. have a guy's perspective on this, and it turns out you're right. <laughs> uh, yeah, the narration literally <laughs> said, it's like, Quinn's like, yeah. I, I can use this. Yeah, really. Yeah. First he was going to use Russell, and now he's just like, he's my boy. I know. Kaylin, did you have something to say, or are you just playing with most of his hair? She's just like with my hair, okay, she claims okay. she doesn't talk on it. Yeah, but then um, what was I gonna say? It was surprisingly cool with the uh, he's like, because at the first when Russell first showed up to him as ghost, he's like, oh, am I imagining you? Yeah. And, and Russell's like, I don't know, are you? <laughs> and oh, they're are just, you? And they're just being, yeah, I know. Because what is them, life? Is this your life? Is this your life? Neither of them know what's going on, but like Quinn's really calm about yeah. this yeah, he's, he is. Like, he's like he's uh, like oh he's calm on the outside and on the inside sometimes he's freaking out oh okay yeah that would make it sense. shows yeah. I, that's when he burst into te- tears and I grabbed your arm instead of oh yeah that was a good head. that's a good uh, I was that was like, a good thing to have it muffled I love that part you like that from, 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 from over so here nice. be- because you guys were like all hugging and everything and oh, poor yeah. little Jamie in the back could have cheated her lines okay so I'm sitting I'm just gonna paint this picture for the audience at home so we have three people on either side of our, our board here. So mm-hmm. I am currently sitting between Christina to my left and Georgia to my right. It's a dangerous place to sit. And, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes when they're, you know, <coughs> acting out their characters, they'll kind of, you know, they, they, they get into it. So, you know, someone puts their hand on someone's shoulder, like, you know, someone's hand actually physically goes on their shoulder. <laughs> um... <laughs> And so they're, you know, uh, what was it? Quinn is talking into Russell's hair. Mm-hmm. Is that what's happening? <laughs> Quinn is talking into Russell's yeah. hair. Yeah. And so Christina, you know, leans across me and puts her face into Georgia's shoulder, which is great and sweet and wonderful, except I couldn't see the script. And we only, <laughs> we only had one script between the three of us. <laughs> and I had already previously lost my place. So I was, like, trying to, like, squish my head Sorry. between them. <laughs> she was I trying to go this. over top of them. I was just like, just oh, laughing. nope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nope. Yeah. I, I didn't waiting. know that was Part going on. Part the Red Sea. Boom. Yeah. I was too concentrated on Jordan. No, I didn't, I didn't really want to, like, interrupt the moment, but I was like, ah. I would have leaned away. Yeah. I did lean oh. away. Okay. Congratulations. No, I, I kind of like it. squeezed between you guys just in time. <laughs> this yeah. is wonderful, though. That was yeah. great. This is great. <laughs> I just, yeah, use your arm. You're, you're just like, uh, uh, okay, like, arm, arm. Yeah, she, she's like, got my arm. She's got my arm. She's got my arm. <laughs> oh, snap. She's got my arm. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on. You're like, you're just, well, I was like, just like, oh, okay. Her, 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 without words, I just I, took your arm. Yeah, I'm like, okay, we're going with this. Gone. We're going. Gone. That's what happens here on Stark Actors on the Airways, WRMU 91.1, Radio Voice Mount Union. <laughs> that was we're really no, fast. I was going to yeah. say, wow. That, pretty good. Like, you can do yeah, the end of commercials. Yeah. yeah. You're like the speed talker. Dude. Uber guy, I think, I think he was... You, you, you were taking I it think from I Hulu saw that dude on the street know. yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> some about him. That seemed like some real commentary on something there. I know. <laughs> Maybe it's something in my subconscious. Oh dun, man. Dun, well, that's not that you can. That you you can't you can't sue anybody for something in your subconscious. What if they were in from my past? <laughs> dun dun dun. Whoa. You wouldn't know it's your subconscious. I know. Oh. Mind equals explode. So. <laughs> what if I like? Sue myself because I'm like, oh, my characters are having too much of myself in them. I'm, I'm sure gonna happens. sue myself. Would I get any money? No. 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 You would, you would, you just, would like, lose, lose money. Yeah, I was gonna say with all the lawyers. You have to hire a lawyer. Well, yeah. for both sides. People would think you were like. You could have the same lawyer for both sides. Mentally deranged. <laughs> well, you could. I have a conflict actually, of interest. Actually, people might think we're mentally that. deranged for always wanting to be our character <laughs> outside. Hey, Georgia, let's be Russell and Quinn while we walk to class. Wait a minute, you don't even go here anymore. <laughs> you don't even go here, Georgia. I don't even, I don't You're the either. person that doesn't go here anymore. I know. I'm, I've, I've become that person at your dorm that's always there. It's the anniversary this week. I haven't even seen the whole movie. Not what? Yet. Wait, what? <laughs> Nothing. I, I, was, I was saying, like, the... She, she, she doesn't even go here. It was a Mean Girls reference. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I've never seen Mean Girls. I haven't okay. seen all of it. Hey, guys, so before yes. we get distracted, would you like to talk about what we've enjoyed, like anything from this semester? And then, yeah, I've got a few questions to go over. And then, yeah, that was, but, the, that was anyway. another thing that I was had your written. writing? Oh, yeah. okay. My other comment that I had written down was I, oh, sud- yeah. I suddenly realized 
Quinn's this, awesome, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I already knew yeah. that. Here. Oh, okay. This Hold is on. this is actually a highly effective way to prepare for some auditions because it's basically cold reading for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Okay. Put this down on your audition pieces, guys. Yes. If you want I feel acting like experience, participate with us. I highly recommend it. I feel like <laughs> so, awesome. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be working at the station Especially over the summer, and I feel like you. way more prepared this year than I did Good. last year because just because of all of the cold readings. <laughs> like, Jamie, you need to write this now. <laughs> you have to. Jamie, yeah, I feel Jamie like I could do especially. that. Yeah. <laughs> no, like that's it's that's a skill. It's a thing it you have is. to develop, and you can like you know, you can just like match the tone of the writing. In, yeah. Yeah. Jamie, J- Jamie yeah. definitely does it the, the most and the best. There's a lot of But I have to say, you've given me some pretty, some, some pretty emotional stuff <laughs> over here that I've had to do with a cold reading. I felt There's lonely. Yeah. No. I'm sorry. Okay, it's okay. So, um, yeah, any, from you, David, or Clarice, things you've been Yes, doing? David, what did you think about being yes. with us for this entire semester? <laughs> pulled into the well, last in semester. a matter of an hour, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I agree with that. Uh, communications definitely necessary in this business um uh this definitely will get you more comfortable in life uh townhouse is also a great opportunity here at mount uh where you can perform poetry yeah Ooh, that's another that's the thing yeah uh, yeah i've never heard of this so. that's cool you mean thanks house? thanks for the shout out <laughs> yeah yeah I, uh i don't uh, the like every two weeks they do uh, something open mic night yeah you think in coffee house yeah coffee house what did i say Townhouse. She said townhouse. Town- oh, I, did. I, oh, I was man. like, what is something about the townhouse? They're not telling Townhouse, me. yeah. I know, Coffee right? house. I'm like, I live in one. <laughs> yeah. Do they have a secret door to Narnia or something? Ooh. I pulled a reference from you last night. I looked for it. I apparently went to Narnia. I promise I looked for it. Elizabeth went to Narnia. Every closet. That's why I was so Wait, is it Clarice's so turn? Yeah, what? Clarice. Oh, uh, yeah, things yeah, you've yeah, enjoyed yeah. about being a part of Stark Actors on the Airways. Oh my gosh, I have been like craving, like I, I don't get to act very much because uh-huh. like I'm, I'm too busy and, and like just being able to do like the little parts here and there have been just like so freaking wonderful. Oh, that I, makes me really happy because that's too. half the reason why I made this show. I, lo- mm-hmm. I absolutely love it and like and it's not as, as like stressful as regular acting because like you're just reading and everything. Right? Yeah. And it, it, I've just had so much fun and I really hope you guys will have me next year. Oh, of yeah, course. Clarice, remind me to give you a huge hug when we're done with this because <laughs> right. seriously. You owe me. <laughs> I made yeah. Well, well, no, I just want to hug. Yeah, no, I made, I made this show because I'm like, hey... I write with my friends. We write stories. I, I, wow, I almost don't, fell back in my chair. I write stories with my friends all the time. And then I'm like, the, well, the theater's being taken down. I want to act, but I can't really do it on stage because I have terrible stage, stage fright. And so I'm like, let's do this. And then now everybody who I know loves it. It's yes, just not yes. so many people. No. It's okay. We were, I mean, we got in and in at presence now. We've got our. We've got a full house tonight. Yeah, I, I know. Say, yeah. It's a concentrated yeah. group, anyways, because it, you, you could have some fans who just are like, eh, but like, I'm, I'm guaranteeing, like, all of our, all of your fans are just like diehard fans and just love yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. The ones, yeah. I know. I love yeah. it. I know. Well, I mean, I, I know can. when I post my artwork online, some people come up to me and they're like, "Oh yeah, I saw the picture of yours." I'm like. Okay, because I, I have no way of knowing. Because they just look at it; they don't fave it or like oh, it or yeah. say anything. I'm like, I know, I hate yeah. when you have I'm to like, 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 like it. So I know that you like it, guys. It's a rule that's now. me telling you yes. to like our stuff, <laughs> so we can tell that you saw it. Yeah, oh, please. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to everything. actually like it; just like it, so we know you saw yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You can yeah. comment and say you don't like it. And yeah, then we'll discuss. Exactly. Yeah. And we'll say I tell you you're wrong. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I was just <laughs> I know, right? But yeah, I've got a that. bonus for uh, everybody because um, bonus. Yeah, because uh, we're gonna. This is. I think we can tell them that this isn't where it ends for Quinn and Russell. These yeah. characters will be showing up later. Yeah, but we're Definitely. kind of be right until the day we die. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I've got a redesign in mind. Oh, for, for the yeah, a bit of like just kind of new outfits for them but uh, oh, yeah no, I'm working yeah, on that yeah, picture and yeah I'm working on that picture and uh, <coughs> once I get it done it'll be up mm-hmm. on the site of like them looking a little differently but yeah it's exciting and so hopefully eventually we'll have pictures of other characters up too yeah as well what? Oh, it's Jamie's just being trying picture. to be just, cryptic, and I'm not I'm letting her. I'm trying hard to be not. Can as we just say that we have a plot or plan for Jamie to be a very there's, important character? There's there's a character who you'll be introduced to either, I mean, potentially over the summer, maybe. 
at we're least we're going to be writing and starting over the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, at least in you yeah. know pic- picture form. Um, but yeah, so hopefully she will be popping up on the Facebook page soon. I'm gonna try. I, I've been trying to develop her. It's been hard because it's been a busy couple mm, weeks. Mm, finals week. Um, yeah, yeah. finals week. More. How about that? Mm-hmm. Not um, bad. But I'm gonna hopefully try and get um, some. I've been working some preliminary like character stuff. I'm hopefully gonna like sketch her out and send her to Georgia so Georgia can mm-hmm. like do the the drawing thing. Um, do the drawing thing. Do the drawing thing and, <laughs> and make her look good and put her up on Facebook and stuff. And Thanks. Um, can we give them a name? Don't give the her look that Christina just don't, gave her. I really don't know. I don't know what that okay, well, is. Okay, well, I'm the one who's approving at. spoilers. You can give a name. I was, That's okay, I'm not, it. I'm okay. not telling. Stop there. I'm not giving anything else. Name. Her name is Gwen. Yes. She's there very nice. You'll hopefully all like her. Yes. Well, okay. I got Clarissa's support. That's what counts. <laughs> it is. Well, I, like I kind of have to support I, I, you. I, know, I, I know who Gwen is yeah. because I've met Gwen. I She's feel, cool. Yeah. I feel like she's <laughs> yeah. an author. I. I feel like being an author, I get to in all of these. I'm like, I know what's going on. It's, I really love this. You guys don't. <laughs> yeah, I really love this position of power. I think someone needs to take For one away time from But it gives you guys a reason. You have to watch the page over the summer. You have to be ready to tune in next semester. Or you can be an author, too. This is true. Too. We're gonna be doing stuff other than other than the the Quinn and Russell story. Yeah, I mean, we're still gonna be with us over the summer. Mm-hmm. Just hit us up. And... Yeah, I'm hoping to have some short story stuff put together. Hoping to like oh, recruit some awesome. other people who I know are planning to write over the summer. Oh, the so. summer is like the best time to write. Yeah. I might yeah. just stockpile scripts and then give them to you. And <laughs> That's, what we're, doing. Yeah. That's yeah. what we're doing. Yeah, this yeah. this transitions nicely. Like what we have in store. Like what we're planning for next semester. Since this is well, next year. What do you, yeah. what do you call it? Next semester? Next next That's school year. Both. Next year. Next and that year. means that you guys, you the viewers, can actually like hit hit them up, I'm sure, on the Facebook thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. During the summer when you, when we're all off and everything. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like there there can be creative juices flying yeah. all over. Mm-hmm. That sounds messy. It was a really <laughs> good <laughs> I'm sorry yeah. that I yeah. did Good match. The bad for you of juices because there might be like tomatoes flying everywhere. <laughs> no, oh, let's yes. not throw tomatoes. Yes. No food allowed in the okay. studio. Yeah, oh. I think we I think we've pretty much covered what we're gonna look for. Like more scripts, more characters, yeah. more, just more. 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 Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. we've been on for an hour, guys. Let's sign off. Yep. I'm going to do it in this kind of accent. Go ahead. All right. Um, David, you are first guest. Say whatever you want, and then, you know, sign off. Uh, I really enjoyed the experience. Uh, I like performing. Uh, this is a little bit easier because there's not a real yeah. uh, audience to pressure and anything, but thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. You said a lot. Yeah. That, 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 golf clap. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best golf clap. That was beautiful. I turned on the radio just then. That was good. <laughs> that, that was great. Yeah. All right, Clarice. Well, I, I've, I've really loved it here. I already Speak told you. Speak loud, love. All right. There well, I go. really loved it here, and I, I already told you that. And I hope you guys and, and our viewers have a good summer and try not to die during the finals week if you're a student. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. This was Clarice Knock. What? I remember when I had to um. <laughs> We no, right well, you took a diploma. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Elizabeth. All right. It's been fun. I love you all, even the ones I don't know. I especially love Ty's grandma. I, I mean, Ty's <laughs> grandma uh-huh. is great. We love you. We need to meet her we sometime. told her that maybe she was studying for an exam. All right. Ty, for listening, we, we love, love you. We love Ty, too. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Uh, this is Elizabeth Wheeler signing off. All right. Um, J- Jamie. <clears throat> Well, I'm glad I've been able to spend the year with you guys. Aww. I, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I definitely I'm look really forward good. to doing this again next year. Hi, Jacob. Hi. We have Hi. a we have a a person. But yeah, I, I definitely look forward to doing this next year. Um, I hope you all kind of. Stay, stay in touch with what's going on over the page and everything over the summer because I think it's going to be some really good stuff. So this is Jamie Laubacher signing out. Have a good one. And now uh, George McCartney. 
I was hoping we'd forget about me. I was looking at you. I'm Aww. like, she's she's dragging the mic towards herself. Yes, yes, no, no, no. no. Okay. It's impossible to forget about you, Georgia. Okay. I, I, what? You know, right? Huh? She says it's impossible to forget about you. Aww. I'm glad I asked you to repeat that. <laughs> okay. Well, I've really had a blast. I mean, it's been a lot of work, but it's been a blast, literally, just like bringing these creations to life and like acting them out with all my friends. This has like been one of my dreams to like be creative with my friends it's like you know just being creative and then having an audience and getting to bring your stuff to life i know i'm repeating myself but it's great it's great feeling right it's great right. it's great right. it's great right. it's been Ever great if you're listening to this, we're sorry. Right. <laughs> but yeah it's do you guys understand with what i'm saying yeah yeah, of course. yeah yeah Heck yeah okay so yeah georgia mccartney please stick around i'll i know i will be so Oh my gosh, this is my last sign out of the year. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, I'm, uh, um, everything that everyone said, I guess. Great opportunity. It's fun. Even though sometimes we late, wait till last minute Wednesday because things get so <laughs> hectic to finish scripts for Thursday. Um, yeah, I just sit in my rocking chair and write, and it's like the greatest. It's so relaxing, and it's 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 a hobby as well as a job, kind of, and it's lovely. And I get to work with all you lovely people, and have you guys get to see my baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really glad you like Quinn. But yeah, everything, it's nice. Um, mom, dad, John, home people, guys listening, love you. Um, hope everyone here and at home has a good summer break. I'm looking at the pods and I don't want to pod them down right now. I'm Aww. sad, Jamie. Do you want me to do it? No, no, no. Okay. I I will go down with the ship. Okay. Oh no. Cat- no. Oh, no. Oh, no. oh no. No, I just brought a reference on accident. Oh no. That was that was Should bad. No, no, Quinn no. said it. Went- All right. Quinn said it to Russell before he disappeared. Yes. Okay. This is. WRMU, 91.1, Stark Actors on the Airwaves. This is your host, Christina Zorch. Have a wonderful summer, and we will see you next year. Good night, and good luck with finals.